Hey guys, welcome back. And today on The Hook, we are working with American Red Snapper. Now, Hi, I'm Dylan Foster and I love seafood. I've been in the Myrtle Beach area for more than 15 years. And since then, my life has revolved around seafood. From cooking and catching it, to serving and selling it, I've done just about everything you can do in this industry. So come and join me as we tour the places, faces, and tales of Myrtle Beach seafood. This is On The Hook. This is an awesome local delicacy. If you missed the episode where we cut this bad boy, here's the carcass. Make sure you go back and check that out. We'd love to show you all the tips and tricks that we taught while we cut that fish. But today, right now, we are focusing on lunch. I'm getting hungry. The guys behind the cameras are getting hungry. My wife is getting hungry. We're gonna make some lunch. So we're gonna take this American Red Snapper, leave its skin on. We're gonna sear it and saute it with the skin on which we scaled in the other episode, and we're gonna make it with a little fresh mango salsa with some red peppers, some jalapenos, some cilantro, really fresh, really vibrant flavors, really coastal, like Caribbean coastal kinds of flavors to pair really well with this American Red Snapper. So let's check it out, let's get started. We have the filet here, completely boned. Again, skin is on, we did take the scales off, so that's gonna be completely edible and delicious. We're gonna now portion this up into a couple of manageable portions. We're gonna just gonna take the top loin off here. We'll do one portion there. All right, set that to the side. Let's do another portion right here. All right, so beautiful, nice white meat. All right, not too thick. You see that's kind of a thin filet. Snapper do tend to get sometimes really large, uh, but this is actually a smaller, a smaller uh, example of our local snapper. So that's gonna be really nice. Skin should get really nice and crispy in the pan, but not overcooked because it's not a super thick filet. So there's another one there. Oh, we got a little scale there. Let's make sure there's scales. These fish scales are like glue. They will stick to everything. So before you start seasoning, make sure you get these fish scales completely off of your fish because we don't want those scales to be hidden around. I do not recommend though, running water over top of it. You're just gonna wash off a lot of the essential oils and a lot of the nice natural flavor. Uh, water is actually an enemy of fresh fish. You, it kind of sounds crazy, right? Because they live in the water, but once a fish is cut, once it's, it's processed like this, there's two major enemies. One is air and one is water. So we wanna keep this cut uh, away from the water as much as possible before we cook it. We gotta make sure our fillets are nice and dry, so we're gonna take them, pat them nice and dry with our paper towels here before we put them in the pan. Speaking of pans, let's get ours nice and warm. We've got our nice 12 inch skillet here, a saute pan. I like to use all clad, that's my brand of choice, but any really nice stainless steel skillet will work well for you. So we got our fire there getting nice and hot. That's gonna start getting warm. And for oil, for lubrication, we're gonna use a vegetable oil as well as an olive oil. So we're gonna let the pan get a little warm before we add those in. But that will be our cooking medium today. So these fillets are getting nice and dry right now. Pat all of that moisture off. A dry skin will be a crispy skin. You want it to be nice and dry before you put it in the pan. If you have a lot of moisture in there, it will not get as nice and crispy as you would like. Turn that little piece off. Now to season, we're gonna take our our house seasoning, which is a blend that I do here in house. Here at Two Sons, we have a house seasoning. We have a citrus herb blend. Uh, for this, we're using the house seasoning. But if you don't have this, you can use any multi-purpose kind of seasoning that you like to use on, uh, on your seafood. Whatever you like is perfect. That's my rule, my go-to rule. If you like it, then it's the way to go. After all, you're the one eating it, right? Typically, you're cooking in your kitchen. So if you like it, that's it, that's what's nice about working uh, in your kitchen for your family is you are the boss. So if you like it, it works for me. So there we go, nice and seasoned up. We've got that seasoned on both sides. Nice uh, coverage there and on the skin. So now this pan is getting nice and warm. We're gonna add a little bit of our vegetable oil. So the vegetable oil is going to have a nice high smoke point gonna allow us to use a lot of high heat. 
and the olive oil that we're gonna add to it is going to add some flavor as well as help brown up in that skin a little bit. So we're using two different types of oil, vegetable oil for the high smoke point, olive oil, which has a lower smoke point but has more flavor. So that's why we're gonna bring the two together to make a great finished product. So that oil, not quite hot enough yet. We're gonna to start to see it ripple. And once it starts rippling, that's when we know it's ready. So we're just gonna watch it for a second and let it get warm. All right, so we've been waiting about two minutes for our oil to get nice and hot. And we're to that point. It's got a little bit of a shimmer, a little bit of a sheen to it. As it's sitting there, you can see some movement in the oil. So that's good. The other way to just double check ourselves is just with the fillet. So we're just gonna take a little dip, listen. That's it. That high pitch sizzle is what we're looking for. So skin on filet, anytime you're cooking fish, skin on, make sure you cook that skin first in the pan because you're gonna serve it skin up. So if the rule is presentation side or the side that your guest or your, your family, whoever's eating your food is gonna see first, that's the presentation side, that's the side you cook first. So fish skin down into the pan, just nice and gentle kind of fold it away from you so if it does splash, it's not splashing on you. So here we go, one and two. Right there in the oil, we're gonna just let them relax there for a second, let that skin start to crisp up. We don't want the heat to be too high, we don't wanna burn it, we wanna do a slow crisp on that. So that is just gonna start hanging out right there, that skin is gonna crisp up, the fats that are in the skin are starting to render out, it's gonna be really awesome. But while that is working, Let's get started over here on our mango salsa. Fresh, delicious mango salsa. So we've got our mixing bowl here. I'm gonna put the fish fillets off to the side. And get started right here with our mango salsa. Main ingredient, first ingredient of the mango salsa are the mangoes. When I'm shopping for mangoes, I like to find one that's not all green, right? We want a lot of color reds, oranges in that mango. It's gonna be kind of soft. Now you don't want it to be squishy, but kind of soft when you squeeze it, it's gonna have a little bit of give, right? On both of these, you see the red, the oranges, this one's got a little bit of green, but that's okay. And now to cut it. Mangoes have a pit that is kind of the shape of your hand. It kind of sits right on the inside of that. It's the entire, almost the entire width or, or footprint of the mango is pit. So. That's on the broad side, we're gonna spin it to its thin side and that pit is gonna be right there. So I like to put my index finger down over the top, imagine that is the pit. And then we're gonna cut down on either side of that pit, you can actually see it right there. So that's one side, do the exact same thing on the other side, come down through. You can feel that pit there and I'm kind of rubbing my knife up against the outside. So there's two halves, let's get this half off, one, and two, there we go. All right, so the fish has been on here for a couple of minutes now, really starting to crisp up. And the really the awesome thing about fish, it makes it actually a lot easier to cook at home than you might realize, is you can watch it cook all the way up through. If you look here, you can see that filet is starting to cook up and you can kind of watch it cook through, through from start to finish. So let's check out our skin, look at that. Look at that, getting nice and crispy there, not burning. Oh boy, let's check this one out. Oh, look at that. Getting nice and crispy, nice golden brown on the filet. Looking awesome, looking awesome. So they're ready to be flipped. We're about 50%, 60% of the way through. So now we're gonna flip that fish nice and gently. We don't wanna break that skin. There's one, use that other hand. There's two, and now that fish is just gonna continue cooking on the opposite side, the flesh side, all the way back up through. A couple of minutes, two, three minutes, uh, we should be good to go on a nice low to medium heat here. We're not trying to cook it really quickly. Slow and steady, get the race finished the best way possible. So that's gonna relax back here. Now let's keep moving on our mango salsa. So mangoes are already cut. To finish these, I'm going to kind of cube them out here in the skin. So be very careful. I can feel that knife tip going through the skin, but not all the way through the skin. I can feel it on the other side. I've been doing this for a little while, so I have a good feel of my knife. But if you are new or you don't want to risk cutting yourself, just you can do the same thing like this on the board. 
going to cube that mango all the way through. And this not only makes it a really easy way to cut it, but if you're looking to do kind of a garnish, maybe for a fruit tray or something, you got holidays coming up, check that out. It makes a really nice little presentation for your mango. So there's one, we'll do these other ones a little faster. Mangoes are one of these fruit that I think a lot of people have trouble cutting. Right? We know it's delicious, we know that they're sweet and really good for you and they go really well, especially with seafood, a lot of different dishes, but they're kind of tricky to cut. There's not really an easy roadmap to cut a mango, so that's why it's important for me to show you the way I like to do it right there. And while we're doing this, what are your favorite dishes with mango? Or when you think of the islands, when you think of the Caribbean islands, what, what dish and what food brings you back? Maybe you've been down there on vacation, maybe taking a cruise out of Charleston or something like that. You ended up in the Bahamas or in the Caribbean, you had some really good food. Let me know. I would love to hear what kind of food you like to eat down there in the Caribbean, or maybe with mango or pineapple. Just let me know, tell me stories. I like to get to know you guys, just like you're getting to know me here in the kitchen. All right, so mango is cubed there. We're gonna just take our knife and just gently trim it right here off. Look at that, in one swipe, you get all of the cubes off. If you really wanna get nitpicky, you can lay it even flatter and trim even more of that mango off. I think I did get a piece of skin on one of these. There it is. Got a little piece of skin. All right, so there's our mango cubes going right here into our bowl. That fish is smelling so good. I'm gonna turn it off because I think we're ready to go. We're just gonna turn that off and let it carry over cook the rest of the way in that hot pan while we finish up this salsa, which will only take a second. So mango cubes there. All right, so there's our mango. Nice sweet mango, let's take a taste. Whoa, man, this is gonna be awesome. That is super juicy and super sweet. I'm looking forward to this. So into our mangoes, we're gonna add a little bit of red pepper. I like to take the top off, take the bottom, move these to the side, and then I'll open up that whole pepper in one motion. Boom, boom, boom. Now we're gonna just get a nice dice. Probably about half the pepper we'll use. Cut these up. Fresh. Sweet peppers, these red bell peppers are gonna add a nice bite, a nice crunch. Also with some, some sweetness there. Gonna be awesome there. Now some red onion. I use red onion in these types of dishes because they are more mild, easier to eat. Not as pungent, I guess would be the word, as maybe a white or a sweet onion that we're not gonna cook. So a red onion really is my go-to onion in this case. So we're gonna do a nice, dice. Not too much. Red onion there, so that's going to have another crunch element, some tang to our salsa, and a lot of beautiful purple color. Looking good, looking good. There's our scraps. Now let's get some bite, some heat, right? We like a little heat to go with our sweet, so from that Jalapeno will be our friend, just like I did the big red pepper. Same technique for the green. Jalapeno, open it up. We're gonna take those ribs and those seeds out. That is actually where the heat is. The heat is in the ribs or these white lines and the seeds of a pepper. And this one is actually a really great example. The chemical in peppers that make them spicy is called capsaicin. And if you take a look real close in here, on that rib right here, you can see some yellow oil spots. Just a little bit of yellowish, orangish oil. That is actually the capsaicin. So that is the chemical in the pepper that's gonna make it super spicy. So we're gonna cut that out just like that. It's gonna bring the heat down a little bit on that jalapeno. So we have the pepper here, really fine julienne strips. And then we'll just turn those little strips and now do a really fine dice. We don't want big chunks of our jalapenos in there. We wanna keep it kind of 
a controlled heat, right? So you don't want to have a big bite of a jalapeno. Keep them small, keep them spread out throughout the salsa. That's the way to go. All right, so check this out. We have our mango. We have our red peppers, red onion, jalapeno, looking really nice here. We're gonna finish it up with some fresh cilantro, some fresh herbs or some, some cilantro. Gonna give us that islandy kind of theme that we're going after here. I've washed these cilantro stems, put them in a deep bowl, cover them with water, swirl them around, get all that sand and debris off. And then you can put them right on the board, bunch them up, and chop them as fine as you like. Cilantro stems are actually, you're, it's okay to use cilantro stems in your dish. They will not create a bitter aftertaste. Parsley, on the other hand, the stems, you do need to trim the leaves from the stems because those stems will create a bitter kind of taste, and that's not really what you want. But the cilantro is a different story. So fresh cilantro going in. It's gonna add a lot more green color. Oh, some awesome flavor. Man, I wish you guys could smell this because from the fish cooking behind me to now this awesome fresh mango salsa, it's taking me back to the islands, man. It's gonna be good. Now, finish it off with some fresh citrus. We got some lemons or some limes today. I've only got the lemons, so that's what we're gonna use. Sometimes use what you got, right? Whatever you got in your kitchen, use it. Don't get hung up on the details. It's all going to be good. So we're going to roll those lemons out, take them in our little juicer here, squeeze all that awesome citrus out of there. And there we go. One, two, three, there we go. And last but not least, four. So two whole lemons, four halves. That's your little math lesson of the day. Four halves equal two holes. And then we're gonna finish it with a little bit more of our house seasoning or a little bit of our house seasoning to tie the flavors of the salsa in with the fish. Oh boy, check that out. Beautiful, really sweet. Oh man, does it smell so good in here. The mango, the red onion, the red pepper, the jalapeno for a little bit of a kick right there, that fresh cilantro, and then that fresh citrus on top of there. That, my friends, is gonna be delicious. I can't wait to throw it on top of our snapper. Speaking of, let's check it. Let's see how we're doing here on our snapper. Oh boy, we got a nice crispy skin right there. We've got our, look at the underside of that. Can you see that? Oh my gosh. Look at that golden brown color, that caramelization. This is gonna be nice and sweet and crunchy. All right, let's get plate in here for our mango salsa, red snapper. Fish going right down here on the plate. One and two. I'm gonna keep it really simple today, really, really simple, because I find that when you have a nice piece of fish with some really nice topping or, or something like that, you don't need to overdo it with a crazy elaborate plating. Keep it simple, keep it fresh, and let the fish be the star. Right now, the fish is the star. We don't need to gum it up with any big heavy side dishes. Let the fish speak. You went and took all of the care to make that a nice fresh piece of fish. Cut it the right way, sourced it the right way, cooked it the right way, so let it talk. Let it, let it be the star of the show. So just a little bit of this mango salsa right here over the top. Look at that, look at how gorgeous that is, oh man. I wish you guys were here with us for lunch today. But me and Christian and Kyle, we are going to enjoy this, let me tell you. A little bit more mango. I'm gonna take a little bit of the juice from the salsa and kind of drip some of that juice of that salsa right down there over the top. Yeah, it's got the mango juice, the uh, red peppers have excreted some juices now, and then those fresh limes as well. Awesome, beautiful, simple and delicious. American red snapper with a fresh mango salsa with red peppers and jalapenos, fresh citrus, cilantro. It's gonna take us right back to the islands, folks. Look at how gorgeous that is. Amazing, I can't wait to try it. All right, 
Here we go, my favorite part. Let's get tasting. We're gonna get a little bit of the fish, a little bit of that mango right here. Look at that, the perfect bite. Mmm. Mmm. I'm a little biased, right? I'm a little biased. I cooked it, but I think this is awesome. First off, you get the cool, refreshing salsa paired with that hot fish with that crispy skin. I mean, it is awesome. The sweetness of the fish paired with the sweetness of the mango, but you got that jalapeno on top, creating a little spice, a little heat there in it. That is a party on a plate, a party in your mouth, and could be a party for you for lunch. Guys, thank you so much. Join us next time on The Hook. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can check out all of our other places, faces, and tales of your Myrtle Beach seafood. Until next time, we'll see you later. Enjoy. Beach easy.